Hi guys, in this video, we will discuss how we can determine the optimum number of clusters for a given data set. We will consider Iris data set for the purpose. It is widely used by the data science practitioners for educational purpose. This data set contains four features, length and width of sepals and petals of 50 samples of three species of iris flowers namely setosa versicolor and virginica let us look at the picture of these flowers see this is how it looks this is virginica this is setosa and this is versicolor and we can observe that petals of virginica these are petals these are three petals right here these are more in length and width as compared to these two species that is versicolor and setosa the is the setosa's petals are smallest as compared to virginica and versicolor so let us create a data frame for petal length and petal width for all these three species so we have loaded the data and this is the scatter plot now this scatter plot is showing us 50 data points containing length and width of each and every species of these flowers now, what we will do? See, the task at hand is we should create how many clusters? 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. See, since these data points are pertaining to these three types of flowers and we can see the petals of these flowers are having distinct dimensions so we can assume that there will be three clusters but there is a way to find out what will be the optimum number of clusters for any given data set so this is the data set we are considering and we will go about the task now but before this let us understand that when we create clusters using k-means algorithm we try to maximize the distance between clusters and we try to minimize the distance between data points in a cluster in other words each and every cluster will have some data points all those data points should be as close to each other as possible in a given cluster but when it comes to the distance between clusters they should be as maximum as possible so cluster should be away from each other to the extent possible and data points within a cluster should be as close as possible This is what will be the objective when we create cluster using k-means. And let us consider one thing. We can never say that all the data points belong to one cluster. If we say that, then there is no need to have k-means algorithm. We, any data set can be considered to be belonging to one cluster. But that makes no sense. Another extreme of this is we can say that every single data point itself is a cluster. So every single data point is in itself a cluster. That means if we have 1 million data points, then we have 1 million clusters. Again, this too doesn't make any sense. 
we have to find for any given data set a logical clusters but the point is how many of them will be the optimum number of clusters for any given data set it can have 10 data points it can have 1000 data points it can have 1 million data points it can have 10 million data points irrespective of the number of data points involved in a given data set there is a way to find out what should be the optimum number of clusters and that is what we are going to do so what happens is given this data set let us consider this particular cluster there is a concept called wcss this is nothing but within cluster sum of squares so what exactly is this it is a sum of squared distance between each and every data point and the centroid in cluster see this data set is going to have one centroid right so wcc is the sum of square distance between each data point and the centroid in a cluster so suppose this is one cluster so we have one WCSS for this. Assuming that there is another cluster over here, we will have another WCSS and then we will have third WCSS. If we have three WCSS, then we will sum them up, all three of them. And whatever figure we get, we call that as inertia. So if there are two WCSS, then the inertia will be consisting of the sum of two WCSS. Okay. So, what we will do is we will iteratively create for this data set two clusters, then we will create three clusters, then four clusters, and then five clusters. Let us make these four sets of clusters and then we will discuss. So, what we are doing over here? We have imported the module called a scalar and we are using k means of that module. So, what we are passing here, we have to pass how many clusters we need. So, initially, i's value is 2, so we are passing 2. And these two lines are enough to create two clusters out of this given data set. And that is precisely what is happening. So once we run this, we have two clusters created initially. That is first iteration. So we have drawn this scatter plot to depict two clusters then it creates creates three clusters one two three then it has created four cluster one two three four and then one two three four five clusters now what we are going to do is having created two clusters then three clusters then four and then five we have to find out which number of clusters is the optimum number of clusters that is what we will find out and how we will find out by looking at the inertia of each and every set of clusters now this particular library will give us that inertia it will calculate so for this there will be one inertia for this another for this another for this another so we have four inertias right now what we will do we will create a line graph like this this is this inertia 
this value is for two clusters this is for three cluster this is for four and this is for five and this is called elbow method why it is called elbow method because this takes the shape of elbow and we have to identify this elbow over here consider this is an arm just see here picture consider this is an arm and we have to concentrate here where it looks like an elbow and that is the point which will give us the optimum level or number of cluster so here three is going to be the optimum number of clusters and this is what is elbow consider consider this to be an arm and this to be an elbow here and this is what is going to be our optimum number of clusters three not two not four not five but three why look when we consider two our inertia is very high it sharply came down and it is three but if we create more than three clusters it is not going to be making much difference right so that is the logic of having this elbow method to determine the optimum number of clusters now we can argue that why three why not four well we can also take four no problem but we know that there are four three sets of data not four right and op it makes sense to settle for this rather than four there will be this graph which will confuse us as to which number will be the the best suited number there could be confusion but since here we know the data set having dimensions for three different species of flowers we can say that okay we will settle for three okay and this is how we come to the conclusion about the optimum number of clusters having found out that three is the case we can simply go and make three clusters out of that data frame so rather than writing that variable and running it iteratively we can state away write three and simply run this and our three clusters are ready and we are confident that the number of clusters that we have created for this data set is correct how it is by looking at this particular graph so what we have done is we have also written custom code it is doing the almost the same thing let us run this okay so this is two then three then this is four something like this okay now five so our elbow the custom codes elbow is something like that again we can set for this because this is not making much of a difference so if we run it all over again right if i run again again the cluster formation will be little different it is it is going to be different all the time right see here it is now it looks much better again we will settle for three see in k means whenever we create clusters every single time the data the result is going to be different because initially how it is going to consider centroids is going to give us the final result hence every time when we run it is not going to be the same so let us run it all over again and just see it will be slightly different than what it was earlier look it here, here it is so now we will settle for three so this is the custom code in the next video we will go through this code and see how inertia is calculated how w within cluster sum of squares is calculated wcss this one this piece how it is calculated see this is library we are using it and we are getting energy as as one of the parameters but 
we should also understand how to calculate hence it is written and this will be discussed in detail so in this video we have learned that given any data set we have to first determine what will be the optimum number of clusters and then go ahead and create that many clusters for the data set thanks for watching i will see you in the next video